folks, Brian here. So today I'm going to be working on my Ford Escape Hybrid. I'm changing the AC compressor because the one that's in there is weak and needs to be replaced. So first things first, I've taken off the shroud at the top of the engine and now I'm going to take off this shroud down here. Now, one of the manuals says that I should jack up the car, but I don't see that that needs to be done right now, so I'm not going to do it. So anyway, let me get set up for that and get that. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the air conditioning system discharged to Freon. And, um, you know, to do that, you need to hook up your hose, hook up a recovery machine. Um, normally, I'd hook the high up, but my high adapter went bad, so I'm going to just work without it for the moment. So I'm going to get my recovery machine and get this refrigerant recovered. And uh, that'll happen while I am taking the shroud off. I don't mess with the battery, but this is a hybrid and I don't trust it. So I'm disconnecting the low voltage battery and I'm going to go disconnect the high voltage. So to disconnect the high voltage battery, you um, need to turn this safety plug. So there. And at that point, there's no voltage going to the front. And that means the motor can't... The pull that shroud off was pretty easy. I still don't see why you need the, the wheel off. Um, the bigger issue is you've got a coolant hose here that's in the way. So I'm probably going to bring this, just drop this loose. You've got a ground loop that's in here that may have to come out of the way. And you're going to have to bring the compressor down to get these hoses off. I don't see any other way to get up there. And... It, everything's just shoehorned in here because it's a hybrid and they build this crap before they they assemble everything before they build the car and i'm just kind of looking around and i'm not seeing anything terribly magical in here but you know i'm glad i don't have to work on this very often because it's a pain in the ass to get to stuff and uh, there's pcv valve that some people have a lot of trouble with it's up in here anyway so um I'm a, you know, there's an oil filler tube right here on the front and there's belts. So the belts and next thing is going to come out and I'm replacing this because this one's got some vi visible wear and I don't know how long it's been in here. So I'm putting a nice Daco belt in. Uh, so let me get, I use my pneumatic wrench to get the bolts loose that were in the frame so that I could just push this auxiliary pump out of my way. This is on a good day this is charmed to get access to but this is a pain in the ass to access and i mean pain in the ass like of the supreme order so anyway you got the bolt on the top right you have to get to from the top and you have very very little access this back, back bolt here is just as bad so i'm gonna see if i can get the camera to position so you guys can watch as i sit here and fight with this and try not to exercise my vocabulary and cuss words because there just isn't access you know you could have mounted this thing in the back and it would have been easy to get to all oh, dumb fucking hoses in the way So the issue I'm having is getting the socket to seat. <laughs> Let's see if we can wedge this up out of the way. There we go. Wedge this up um, under the way. dealing with hand fatigue.
this shouldn't be this hard to engage this socket. All right, I'm gonna get there. 20 minutes of cussing and fighting with this, I've discovered that I was using a 12 millimeter socket on a 13 millimeter bolt. I jam that up in there further. So it was never gonna fucking fit no matter what angle I had it at or what wrench I used. There we go. This is turning, this is a shit show of the first fucking order. So that's loose. Now I gotta get it out. This is one of the stupidest fucking designs that was clearly done by an engineer who's never had to work on anything. I'm sure I'm not the first person to have cussed them. Because there's only a dozen ways you could have done this that wouldn't have been this difficult to work on. This is an example of something that's very easy to fix when it's on a bench, and it's damn near impossible to fix when it's installed. that turns a five minute job into a fucking hour job. Piss poor engineering. That requires like dexterity that only Houdini would be jealous of. That's finally loose.
this. Now I've just got a fucking Houdini, a Houdini bolt. Another example of piss poor engineering is a bolt that is restricted by the fucking hoses in front of it that you can't get to until the assembly is out. Now, I probably could figure out a way to get those bolts, those hoses loose, but even the factory service manual says that you gotta drop the compressor and then remove the hoses. Let's see if we can use at least one common sense tool on this job. This is working my hand, making it hurt. All right, and I'm held in by my favorite bolt at the top. zip tie. I'm trying to figure out what I'm hung up on at this point. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So now we got this out of here. And I'm not supposed to let it hang by those hoses, but I don't really see anything else to deal with. So I'm going to let it hang by the hoses for a second while I undo them. is it looks like it's just a um, worn out compressor and it was a Chinese compressor not a reman and um, you know it's seven years old I think that's a fair lifespan on a compressor that runs the entire time the vehicles in service and I don't see I don't see any black crap in here 
Yeah, I don't see anything that indicates abnormal wear and tear. So we've got the old and the new, and we're going to check. Well, I guess it was pressurized. So I guess that's a new bolt. It's like the old bolt, but I'll go ahead and use the new one. That's looking pretty good. Really wasn't expecting it to be pressurized like that. All right, so at this point, I just need to clean it up and get it installed. Fun. All right, because we really enjoy a challenge, especially the challenge of working in strange angles. Later. So the two bolts on this side are pinned, which makes it easy to, well, I don't want to say easy because there's nothing easy about this compressor installation. So there's one bolt in, and now I'm going to probably pay dearly for not putting them all in the compressor before putting it up here. to that one last because it's the fucking hardest one to get to. Oh yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. Yeah, I'm gonna suffer for that one. You know what? I'm gonna pull this out and put these bolts back in because there is no way that I can do this from underneath here. loose that's loose can't get this one without taking this off. Yep, there's just no way around that. Do it from that side either. I have to be able to see it. Oh man. I broke. 
broke a clip. God damn it. I broke this clip. So I'm gonna see. Yeah, that is not gonna be salvageable from the other one. Let me see. So it looks rough, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna zip tie it back in place. Okay, so I'm gonna replace these hoses because they're cracked, but the hose won't be here for probably a week. So for now, this is just gonna have to work because I need my car. Um, anyway, I've talked this stupid auxiliary coolant pump up there out of the way. And that's probably the best place for it to get it the heck out of the way so you can work on this. In the meanwhile, I need to get these bolts started. But first, I... all right, this is a weird camera angle, but I'm trying to get you guys into the action. And I'm really sorry that it's a weird camera angle, but this is a really difficult thing to reach. This is on a Schrader valve, but it doesn't matter. I kind of wonder if it's good. All right, it's easier to work on. It's not up. the right 
there's instructions on these. this one in here first. Son of the bitches that designed this saves themselves all of 30 cents a fucking car. So I finally got the one done. It's a pain in the ass. Get this past this thing. The brake lines are in the way. I don't want to open the brake system. That's a whole other pain in the ass. Yes, I threw it. I'm pissed at it. All right. So now we just have some O-rings to replace. Deal with the orifice tube, and apparently it lives in here.
far more likely to be in here. Far more likely. Alright, so go ahead. Yeah, it's in there. Put some oil on my fingers and lubricate that. given for thinking that we're done, but we're not. Thank you. 
real important to get these fittings just right. second one and keeping them in order found the refugee screw there we go it's in only took five extensions we're almost done there's a filter that's in one of these lines so I got to take a couple bolts. This is a 13 millimeter socket and it's a pretty small object. So I think it's in the small line here. What I really need is a pick, which I don't have. There we go, got it. And that's pretty nasty. I'm willing to bet it has never been changed. It's plugged. All right. All right, now I couldn't find an O-ring in there that was the right size, so I'm just gonna put this one back in and it should be okay. I popped myself really good on the hitch getting up. Oh, that sucked. Major, majorly sucked. Hurts. I got a little bit of blood drawn. I'll go look in the mirror and see what I did to myself later. I'll have plenty of time to take a shower while this thing is vacuuming down. All right, there we go. So, I'm willing to bet you that is something that nobody has ever done to this vehicle. And it sure as hell wasn't done in the last change. And it will have a huge impact on the cooling capacity of the battery. Might actually make it work like a hybrid again. So now what I need to do is vacuum it down and go lick my wounds from bopping my head on the stupid hitch. And hit it really so I am in the process of pulling a vacuum. You can see here it's got minus 30. And what I'm basically going to do is leave it on what I call a hard vacuum. I'm going to go take a shower and leave this run for 20, 30 minutes. And the reason is, is once you get it to uh, minus 30 on an analog gauge, you're pretty good. But any moisture that's in the system will now evaporate out because the pressure is zero. 
and we just want to leave it here for a while and let it do its thing and get every bit of moisture out of the system because the moisture will combine with the oil and the refrigerant and form an acid which eats at the parts in the system. And this is probably one of the most important parts of doing any refrigeration work is to pull as hard and deep of a vacuum for as long as you can before you charge the system. So I have been doing a leak down test, which means I've turned the isolation valve from the pump and just left everything else open for about the last five or six minutes. And my gauges are still pegged out at maximum vacuum, and that suggests that um, I don't have any leaks. So now if I left it alone long enough, these little fittings here would eventually begin to leak because they're just not that reliable. So, but the most important thing is I open that and that barely moves. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my moisture evacuation and I'm just gonna leave it like this for a while while I go take a shower and eat a salad and then I'll come back out and put refrigerant in it. All right, so I am uh, weighing in the last of the 41 ounces of refrigerant. So on your vehicle, you'll have a sticker like this. Sorry, it's a little dark, you can't see it. It says how much oil and how much refrigerant should be used and what kind. So I'm kind of watching my pressure gauges and I'm using just a scale and I'm counting down to, uh, I'm gonna overcharge it by an ounce. Um, and I don't think that's significant. So uh, we're at 0.26 pounds um, where our target is 0.45 which will uh, put 42 ounces or 43 ounces of refrigerant into the system it calls for 41 ounces again I really don't think a one or two ounce difference is going to be a big deal on this system um, and I'd rather have it slightly overcharged so if I walk around there is something really exciting that I've never seen before and so I've never seen a puddle under the back of this vehicle and I've owned it a year. And so you gotta ask yourself, good grief, what in the world is going on? Well, really an exciting thing. So if we look up here, just kinda lay down so you can see it, there is a drain tube for the rear evaporator coil and it has never dripped water, which suggests that yes, that nasty, filter that I changed that was all of three and a half dollars has never been changed and now that it's changed the uh, rear battery air conditioner works like a champ I have to wonder how long that's been bad I mean it is just going to town air conditioning that battery which means that the hybrid mode actually might start to work like it's supposed to and give great gas mileage so that's really really exciting at first I thought it might be something really horrible like a leak of refrigerant oil, but it's not. It is water coming out of the condensation tube and that's what should be happening. I want to talk a little bit about this. We're, we're kind of approaching my magic number here. We're at 0.32 pounds, so we're two thirds of the way there. So there are two kinds of refrigeration systems. One kind it uses a TXV, which is actually what's in the back of this vehicle, and the other kind uses an orifice tube. And an orifice tube basically pokes a really tiny hole and says if you have a certain amount of refrigerant and a compression source that establishes a certain PSI, you'll basically balance the system at the optimal performance. Um, it, it's it's you know they're they're fantastic under a narrow set of conditions whereas a txv works under a wider set of conditions but orifice tube systems are charge sensitive so put too much refrigerant in they don't work worth the crap put too little refrigerant in they don't work worth the crap the smaller the system the more sensitive they are um, this is a 41 ounce system so it's actually probably a six or a seven ton uh, air conditioning system is what i would guess and um, so it's not as sensitive as say um, a dorm fridge which might have six ounces of refrigerant and be balanced like on the head of a needle but you still want to weigh in your refrigerant charge to make sure you get it right you don't want to just kind of guesstimate or you'll be off pretty badly um, ideally you should be exactly on i'm going to go ahead and just overcharge by a couple ounces because i really don't think it's going to make a big deal and um I, will, I probably have lost a couple ounces in, you know, changing my cans. I, you know, I've lost, you know, because I, I lose some when I open the hose and then I bleed out the air because I don't want any moisture or 
non-compressibles in the refrigeration system. Um, so anyway, it, it's just a calculated guess. Um, I do have my uh, EPA re uh, refrigeration licenses for automotive and small appliances. So I, I actually do know what I'm doing and I've studied this quite a bit. Not my first rodeo, um, but uh, it is my first hybrid to do this too. So, you know, net net is this took me all damn day. I, I lost about $20 worth of parts, but I did it and it's working. And, you know, if I'd gone to a dealer, this would have been $900 or more. So I'm really happy. Thanks for watching. Have a